Today what you're going to learn is how to do the cross product, how you're going to find the cross product, and how you're going to uh, use it and apply it. If we took two vectors in three dimensions, the cross product is, I mean, if you've ever seen Freddy Krueger, I have not. Is he scary? Yeah, he's pretty scary. But anyway, let's say you have these two vectors, and uh, then you have a vector perpendicular to this one and perpendicular to this one. Can you see it kind of going this way? That's the cross product. It's the vector that shoots out perpendicular to both. Now, there's two of them, one going this way and one going up this way. If you do A cross B, you get this one. If you do B cross A, you get this one. So those are the... the but you need to realize that you're finding an actual vector this time. And then there's going to be a crazy result application with that. Uh, when you see the X, that means cross product. And I'm not going to prove it here. I'd like to, but I'm not going to at this point. If you took the magnitude of the cross product, it is equal to magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle theta. What does that look like? A lot like. Do you remember a formula that had magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the sine of theta? Dot product. It was cosine theta that time. Magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cosine theta will give you the dot product. Now, dot product is not a vector. It's a number. When it was zero, it meant the angle would be 90, and you could find the angle with it. When it's dot product, or A, magnitude of A, magnitude of B, sine of theta, then you have the magnitude. That's what these are. Magnitude of the cross product. Now, this doesn't give you a vector. It gives you the magnitude of the cross product. We're going to actually come up with a way of figuring that out. And uh, I'm not going to prove it, but just a couple of things that are interesting. If you took I cross I, two in the I directions, magnitude of a unit vector is one. What's the angle between two X directions or I directions? What's the angle between them? Zero, right? So what's the sine of zero? That's zero. So all the I dot I's are going to be zero. K dot K's, J dot J's are going to be zero. But what's interesting is when you do I dot cross J, <coughs> excuse me, you have one times one times the sine of, what's the angle between I and J? 90. So what's the sine of 90? one. So all of these are going to be one, one. As long as they don't match up, I cross I or J cross J, they're going to be uh, one. And then there is a difference between I cross J and J cross I. So would you take your hand, right hands, and this is direction I, and, and J is up. So if you take your fingers here and go up, what direction is my thumb? out. And so that's a positive one. Now let's say I did J cross I. Now what happens? It goes in. This will be negative one. And you can do this with all of them. Uh, I cross K. So I is this direction. Out is K. What direction is J? Up or down? Down. So this is negative. This will be positive because it's K cross I, so it's out here. Yeah, that's positive. And then J cross K was going to be, let's see, J is up. Go to out. This is going to be positive, and this one will be negative. So what happens is, is that when we start putting these together, you're going to notice a weird formula. And this is how we find the actual vector A cross B. And it's going to have three parts. It's going to have a unit vector I, it's going to have a unit vector J, and a unit vector K. Now, unfortunately, well, we'll, we'll, we'll develop this really well. Okay. This is a determinant. We don't do matrices in HL anymore, but we will in further, or you will in further. 
And in further math, when they talked about determinants, it's just a number that helps people solve three by three um, or, uh, equalities. So how we're going to do it is, would you, on your iPad, cover up A and B? Can you put that away, please? Oh, thank you. Cover up A and B. What you have left is this square. Okay, if you cover up what's underneath I, you have this square, and we're going to make an X, and this is going to be A, I'm going to use different color here, A2, B3, multiplied together, minus A3, B2. So I cover this up, A2, B3, minus A3, B2. That will give me the coefficient for I. Next, we're going to cover up what's under the J, and when we do that, essentially we're going to get, cover this up, this part here, and this part here. Now notice my box is a little distorted, isn't it? It's going out here and in there. We're still going to have this uh, nice little, I wonder if I can go X. Can you see that better? Okay. And you're going to do this. So it's still going to be A3, B1. A1, B3. And then it's going to be minus A3, B1, just like before. But because we're, we're kind of doing this backwards, this is going to be a minus sign. And that's the only thing you're going to forget. Even though you have your packet, you're going to do... X marks a spot this way, minus that way, every time. But the middle one, because it's on the ends, it's going to have the minus. Then the last one is going to be covering up underneath the K. And then you just do the box right here. And this is going to be A1, B2, minus A2, B1. And this will be plus. So it's A1, B2. 2 minus A2, B1. It's a very good vitamin, by the way. That's your cross product of how you find a vector knowing coefficients of two vectors. So we're going to put this into effect. We're going to actually apply this. And this formula won't be super helpful to you. Uh, so now is where it gets good, where you're actually applying it. I have three points in midair, and we're going to find the vector perpendicular to the three. So let's say you had a point out here, A, a point here, B, a point here, C, in three dimensions, just all, every which way. And you wanted to find a vector A cross B. Well, we're going to make two vectors, a vector AC and a vector AB, because now you can see this vector kind of coming out perpendicular, right? You can kind of see that coming out here, A cross B. Hi. Good. So um, we're going to figure out how to do that. So the way you're going to do it is you're going to make two direction vectors. And I told you the most important thing on the test yesterday is how do you take a, make a direction vector for AB? Head minus tail, yeah. Every time if you think head minus tail, you can create any vector you want. So this first one, head minus tail, AB, you're going to go 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, 4 minus 1 is 3. And then AC is going to be uh, head minus tail, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. Do you agree with those direction vectors for A, B, and A, C? And look at how easy that was. We just started with A, radiated out, and we have two vectors. Now we're going to find what's perpendicular to them. So would you take your hands like this and then make an angle? And then look at your thumbs. They're, those are the cross products perpendicular to those two. All right, so now we're going to do it. You ready? 
first thing. I, J, K, these are unit vectors, length 1, and we're going to take 1, 2, 3, and negative 2, negative 1, 4, and we're going to produce the cross product of that. You ready for this, Jake? All right. So I'm going to cover this up, and I'm going to go 2 times 4 minus negative 3. So 8 minus negative 3i. Covered this up. 2 times 4 minus 3 times negative 1. And it is minus. Then I'm going to have a minus. Now we're ready for the j part. For the j part, I cover these, the middle part. 1 times 4 is 4 minus negative 6 will give you 4. 4 minus negative 6. And then the last one will be plus something k. Cover up underneath the k. It will be 1 times negative 1 is negative 1 minus a negative 4. So how awesome is this? You get 11i minus 10j plus 3k. That is the cross product of those. And you did that from three points. So you made the direction vectors first, and then you just went ahead and did the cross product using the determinant. That's the vector perpendicular to both AB and AC. Uh, one quick application is um, area of a parallelogram. Now, where does that come from? Let's say we had two vectors, A and B, just in space, and we wanted to make a parallelogram out of it. You could do a parallel B out here, parallel A here, and you can kind of see a, a parallelogram that you could actually find the area for. The formula for a rectangle is base times height. Do you agree with that? So if I clip this off and moved it over here, can you see that this parallelogram is still base times height? Yeah. So nice formula. Area of a parallelogram is going to be the base, which is the magnitude of A, and the height. Well, I'm going to have to use some trickery here. The sine of theta is h over b, so h, the height, if the area is the base times the height, we'll erase the height and put base times sine of theta. So h equals base times the sine of theta. And does this look familiar to you? Magnitude A, magnitude of B, sine theta, look familiar? What is that? That's the magnitude of the cross product. So weirdest thing ever is the area of a parallelogram is the magnitude of the cross product. What about this triangle, which is probably more of what we would want? What's that going to be? What do you do to, the, to my uh, parallelogram? Half of it. So it's just going to be the magnitude of the cross product divided by 2. And there it is. There you got it. And if you wanted to, you could do this example. We're going to do it in class. But um, it's really the same thing. You're going to find AB direction vector. You're going to find AC direction vector. You're going to make the cross product determinant. And then you're going to find the magnitude of it, and you'll get the parallelogram.